So um, let me go ahead here because I, I think what Keith has to share, at least, and especially when I present it with him, is a lot more interesting and more relevant. So Keith, I'm going to go and make you the presenter. I'll hit yes. So you should now. We should we see your screen? Yep. And Keith, I thought maybe um, I mean you did a great job when we were on site. Did, did you know maybe pretend it's kind of an internal group where you're sharing kind of what you've put together? Are you comfortable with that, or do you want me to? Yeah, absolutely. Kind of, yeah, I okay, just did that great. this morning. So <laughs> I, okay, I did, great. A, did an internal demo this morning. So I'm definitely comfortable doing that. All right, so, what I'm, so we're just going to uh, jump right into projects. What I'm showing you right now is a list of projects at one of our depots. We have uh, five different de depots, Anacostia, Gaithersburg, uh, Laurel, Littonsville, and Temple Hills. So what I'm showing you right now are the projects for Littonsville. So this gives you a list of uh, BR means their water jobs, uh, BRCR means their water sewer jobs, uh, CI is sewer, and then uh, PM uh, jobs down here are our uh, IDIQ jobs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one of these jobs, this CI 59, 4928 F08, and I'm going to drill down into that and show you information about that, and then we'll look at the processes that we use for capturing the information in the field, uh, look at our documents and you know what we capture there and some of those kind of things. So when we click onto a project, obviously we go to the project details first. That's our home page, if you will, for a project. And so you can see here we have the start date and the completion date. We have a description. Um, and then down here in the custom fields, which are all configurable but by the user, we have added a bunch of information so we know, um, you know what the, the purchase order number is. We know the contract name, the term. Um, we have to track uh, internally our small and local minority business enterprise uh, goals and percentages of, that they're uh, being met. Um, again, this is a Littonsville depot, so we have the construction manager who runs that depot is Mike Trail. He's the one that was on us with the presentation at CMAA. His, the contract mentioned right him for this job is Alfred Joyner, and then the inspector of this job is Stuart Lee, and this is their phone numbers. We could actually actually put in their cell phone numbers if we wanted to. The contractor is Miller Pipeline. The contractor's rep is Matt Callahan. And, and then there's other information down here about awards. And then down at the bottom, uh, our acquisition office requires us to do a monthly report that uh, shows uh, what the status is of different uh, pieces of this project. Uh, you know, how, what knowledge the contractor has, what quality they're, they're generating, are they in compliance with, with our uh, subcontractor reports, um, are they delivering the product on time, uh, or they, do they have effective management, safety, and the ability to finish the project in a satisfactory manner. So we fill out all this information on a monthly basis, and that gets rolled up into a report I'll show you in a little while, and that gets uh, sent up through our upper management to the, to the GM. Um, so that's, that's where we start is on the details. This is updated by the contract manager on an as-needed basis, but not less than once a month. So if I go from here, I want to look at the documents for this particular project. I'll click on the project documents, and this will give me a, a list of the tree, uh, project document tree. And you can see I have 82 project, uh, documents in this uh, project. Um, a lot of those are, in the, are the contract documents, where in here we may have the, um, the plumbing cards, which uh, would allow us to look at, you know, what exactly is installed in that particular house. You know, so this is a plumbing card from 1971. It shows us, you know, the, the type of connection, you know, what was put in. It's a single connection. It's at seven and a half feet deep for the sewer, and it's 17 feet from the sewer main to the property line. Um, so all that information we scan and upload into eBuilder to allow our field team to be able to access it in the field. Um, we also have what's called an assigned worksheet, where uh, this is actually the work that's going to be done on this particular project. And we can pull that up and zoom in on it, although it's not zooming. Um, we can get in here and we can see, OK, at, at you know every address, you know here's the manhole information, the length, et cetera, et cetera. We've got the map and grid page. We've got uh, the diameter of the main. And, and then it's going to tell us, you know, in this case, what, what are we doing? We're doing point repairs from this station to this station. So that's on that's on the um, lateral side or on the main side. We also can look at the lateral side, or we can look at the um, the, the actual uh, manhole information if we want as well. Um, so in inside, you know, these folders, we can store information like submittals. Uh, here are all the submittals that have been submitted uh, for this particular job. 
Um, but we also use the submittal module, which is down here, and I'll go through that in a minute. But it's linked to this folder so that any, anything submitted through the submittal module, it, the documents actually end up in this folder. Um, so that's where the, most of those, that information is coming from at this point. Again, this is all pre-configurable. This matches our, we, we created this by matching what our existing file cabinet looked like. And so we took that structure and, and uh, represented it in eBuilder so that it was familiar and easy for our uh, contract managers and our inspectors to be able to use. Uh, if I jump down to submittals, I can, we can see that um, we have a list of uh, submittals. And we have, uh, this is our standard list of submittals that's required for all contracts. And so the, uh, each one of these would be filled out by the contractor, and they would attach the documents here, and then they would submit that to the contract manager for review, and he would then subsequently either approve it or he could send it out to the engineer, either internally or externally, to review and approve. So this we, we've started this module back in uh, the fall, and it's working really well for us, and uh, we, we're, we're incorporating this now in, in every job. Let me jump to the processes. I know this is where you guys really want to get some of the meat of, the, of what we're doing with eBuilder. Um, essentially, our process is that uh, every day an inspector goes out into field, he has to write a report about what information is being done on that particular job. So we call that, the, obviously, the daily inspection report for water and sewer contracts. So an inspector in the field would pull up his laptop, open up to this page, and then he would start this selected process. And what he's going to do then is he's going to fill out this information about the about the project. So he's going to you know come down and pick her, his or her name, pick the uh, contract manager. He's going to insert the day of the inspection, uh, which would be today. He's going to pick the contractor's rep that's there. Uh, maybe it's Chris Schuler. Um, they're going to you know, say the weather in the afternoon. It's it's cloudy. You know, et cetera, et cetera. Then he'll come down here and he'll fill out the description of work. He'll say, you know, crew A uh, is a um, manhole uh, repair uh, crew, and and then he might say that they did, you know, 17 uh, vertical feet of uh, manhole uh, grouting or something like that. So they would just put the description in here of what the work is that they did for the day. Um, if there are work orders associated with this particular uh, uh, daily inspection, they can click on this Add Work Order button, and it'll kick off the work order process. And I'll show you that in a minute. Um, we come down here, and, and we would say, oh, this is crew number one. The crew description is um, CJ Miller uh, Pipeline. That's the company that's doing the work. You know, and then we have them describe, you know, what's on, what labor is on site. So they might say, you know, they have a, a crew a crew chief uh, was there for you know seven hours, and then. They have, you know, laborers. Um, there were, uh, oh, sorry, there were three laborers uh, for seven hours. Um, and an equipment operator, you know, four hours or whatever they're there for. Um, so this is again, we can start track. We can track. This is important because if we get into a claim situation, we know that the contractor can't claim that, oh, I had, you know, 14 dump trucks there when actually they, they, they didn't. Um, or, you know, so it could, it let's just track the, both the, uh, the labor and the equipment. So in the equipment, they would write in, you know, how many trucks are there, what types of trucks, you know, whether it's a vacuum truck or a dump truck or, uh, you know, crew uh, stake bed or whatever. So they can do this for each crew that's on the site because you may have on that particular contract, you may have multiple crews working in multiple locations uh, if it's a sewer contract. So we have the ability to in, in, enter up to 12 different crews. And then down here at the bottom, they can enter any uh, uh, things that happened in the field, like that they had to issue a field order or uh, if they had to you know, give the instructions to the contractor. They can check this box so that it's searchable later on. And then they would uh, browse their computer and pull the report in from their computer and attach it to this particular process. Same for supplemental information. You know, they may have a, a, case, a case board they're putting in, or they might have a shutdown or, uh, for the water line installation. You know, those kind of things. And down here, we can enter visitors to the job site so that we have a record of you know somebody that showed up, maybe from the, the county inspection force or the state highway or somebody like that. So they enter all this information about their report, and um, then at the bottom, this is where we get into tracking what the costs are. 
So they would select a commitment for this particular uh, job, which a commitment is just simply what the bid sheet, the bid list, the bid sheet looks like. So it just lists every item that's in the bid. Um, so you can see here we got test pits, uh, gravel. So in this particular case, maybe they're working on a uh, on a lateral and they need to enter. Uh, you know, they put in um, you know five cubic yards of of crush and run, um, and they did um, a reconnection of a uh, sewer service from a manhole. So maybe they did one of those, and then they put in um, uh, twenty, let's say twenty five feet of uh, lateral uh, galvanized water with copper. Um, so then, once they've entered all the quantities for that particular uh, contract, they'll go down to the bottom, and they would submit that. And that would become the daily report for that particular day for that particular contract. Does anybody have any questions so far? Okay, hearing silence, I'll move forward. You know, and, and Keith, just you know, just to play back what what you talked about. So, kind of the guts of this is you guys created your own form in eBuilder, so it's all configurable. Correct. The items in red mean that uh, those That's users required, have required to, information. Yeah. Required information, right? You can attach documents over an e-builder, and then at the bottom, I saw that as you had your own cost breakdown structure for right. the contract, uh, as you were putting in quantities that's totaling up the dollars, and then if you would have submitted that form, it would actually have taken that 1.6, uh, you know, whatever the number was down there, right. and actually placed it in a certain column in right. the cost worksheet that right. you all defined uh, as your process. Right? right. I'm actually going to show that now. So I'm going to I'm going to close this. I'm not going to submit it, but I'll show you. Here's a here's a uh, one that's been submitted for a manager review from uh, one nine. So you can uh, we'll pull this up and look at it, and you can see you know how this would look in real life. And so you see the inspector was lease steward, Alfred Joyner still the contract manager, but crew one you know did work on Williamsburg Drive, and crew two was at Indian Springs, and crew three is at Alpenglow. So you've got three different crews working over on this thing, and so here's information about the crew. You know what? What they had a Case 580 backhoe and a pickup truck. You know these guys had a, a, a 310 John Deere, which is a big excavator and a, and a pickup, and this guy just had a form a, a camera, and this guy had a vacuum truck. So we keep track of what's what information that is on site by the crew, um, and then down at the bottom, uh, well, he didn't actually have any uh, quantities on this particular report. But um, if I show you perhaps one that's been finished already, you might be able to see one that has quantities. I haven't looked at these ahead of time, so I'm not sure what we're going to see. Um, but what, what what does happen is when we go through this daily report, it, there, if there's uh, costs associated with them, it's, it's, it all adds up. The other way we do uh, capture costs is we actually capture via work order. So when we open a work order, um, we could be in the field and each um, each uh, sewer uh, or each water job or each sewer connection that we update or we replace actually has a work order generated on a work order system. And so by using eBuilder, we're able to capture that uh, work order number, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the date inspected and, and all the information about the work. And again, we go to the commitment and then we put in here you know what quantities were done for that particular work order and then this gets uh, uh, submitted and approved by the contract manager and, and the difference now is that not only do we capture those costs in eBuilder but that work order information is automatically fed back to our mainframe uh, work order uh, system and, and that work order is updated or closed out if it's completed. So it, it eliminates a lot of where we used to have to do that work by hand. At the end of the job, they would collect all the work orders and they would give them to the secretary, and she would have to manually go through and update the quantities of what had been submitted or what had been installed on that work order, and then close out the work order. Now, by using eBuilder, we do all that automatically. And the the fact that it gets put into your mainframe—that's an integration, just right from not mistaken that we created that it's taking data from the reports in eBuilder and pushing it to right. your. Uh, Right, we push it up to the FTP side, and then uh, IT picks it up and uh, parses it and puts it into our MMIS uh, mainframe workflow system, work order system. Okay. All right, so if I want to now look at the cost, here's the cost for the projects, $1.7 million. Um, if we scroll over here, we can see that um, our actual so far, we spent $443,000 um, on 
you know, sewer main lining, sewer replacement, and, and sewer house lining, and sewer house replacement, and a little bit of water work. Um, if I want to look at the actual cost, I can drill down to the actual cost, and I can look at every invoice that's been submitted, and those are usually, in, in, you know, submitted with the daily report. So you can see a lot of these are submitted there zero because there was no work going on at that time. But if we go down here to the bottom, we start to see some that have um, that have costs associated with them. So and these are the ones I was kind of these are see, they're doing most of the submittals on the work orders themselves. Uh, and we've this is something we started back in uh, in August uh, as a way to uh, capture this information. That's so we set that process up. But if I open up that work order, I, I can look at and see exactly what was done. Um, and I see as we, we did a sewer main replacement in connection with the house renewal, and if I show the quantities, it'll show me exactly how much was put in. So they did one sewer main replacement, they did 34 feet of new copper on that particular house lateral, and then they did one sewer house uh, lateral replacement. Actually, that was probably um, uh, four inch PVC on that. It's not water, it's sewer. So, and I, then I can, you know, I can just page through each one of these work orders if I'm interested to, to see, you know, what was done on each one. But this gives us a way to look at all of our actual costs um, by project so that we can uh, see what was done on each end of the work order on this sewer job. And, Keith, I know you're kind of coming up on your time frame. Are there any reports that show programmatically the overall? I, I remember there was some comment made that, you know, this one report rolls up everything and it gets sent to uh, – I think somebody in your leadership once a day at the end of every day automatically. Yeah, we actually have it uh, on in. We actually download all of our data every night to our FTP site, and we're able to run uh, reports on crystal, uh, crystal reason, crystal reports uh, to that are accessible through a web browser uh, to our business object server. It's kind of a convoluted way, but it gives us a little more control over how we present the information. Is that we could run the same report from eBuilder. Whoops. We could run the same report from eBuilder. Like if I wanted to do a daily item and estimate report, I can go in here and I could run this daily item estimate report. I can put, pick that same project, right, um, the 20, uh, F08, and I could say that I want to see, you know, everything from July the uh, 1st to everything for this physical year, and it will show me exactly, you know, what what has been installed on this, on this job and, um, how much money I've spent on each one of these line items, all right? So based on that, then we we basically dump all that information out every night, and which gives us the ability then to run a report like this, which shows you, okay, for this fiscal year, which is uh, July the 1st through December the 31st, we've done, you know, uh, 1.6 miles of lateral lining. We've done 4.8 miles of lateral replacement. Uh, we've done 2.39 uh, miles of main bursting. Uh, 12.3 miles of main lining and 0.5 miles of main replacement. And those are the numbers that our uh, GM is looking for and our chief engineer as where our program is based on replacing uh, this year 35 miles of uh, sewer line. Um, so we've got uh, 13 miles in and we have you know to make up the rest as we go along for the rest of this year. Um, but if I jump back here, I just wanted to show you a couple other reports that we do. We we have our contract performance issue questionnaire, which is what our accounting people ask us to, or, I mean, our acquisitions people want to see. And so it's really just a summary of all those details that I had on the detail page. It shows you the construction manager, the contract manager, the term, the 1,400 days, uh, when it started, when it's going to be complete, how many days are left, how much time is remaining, and how much money has been spent. Um, let me just jump to one that's not a, a uh, well, here's a, a water job, and you can see that they've got 14% of their time remaining, and they've spent 67% of their money. So they've got a problem in that they're probably not going to finish that remaining $500,000 in you know the 71 days left on the contract, or it's going to be pretty tough. But you know we can look down through here and see if there's any issues. Um, in this case, they don't seem to think so, but maybe we haven't looked at that one hard enough yet. Um, but we can you know run through every project this way and look at all the all the details of everything that's going on. Um, and every everybody's contracts are in here. So this is my landscaping contract. You know, I can see how many days are left, how much I've spent, you know, what percent of money I've spent, you know, things like that. So the um, days of uh, filling something out in a spreadsheet, taking time to get rolled up, everything right. that the management was looking at uh, was, I guess, a rear view mirror in arrears, right? right? Exactly. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to show you one more report here. 
this is our monthly water and uh, monthly sewer report. We have a similar report for water, but um, this allows us to look back over the month and see exactly uh, again how much we've done in every project. So it's basically taking the same information that we saw in eBuilder and uh, we're able to compile it in a, in a uh, by adding up you know uh, totals in a little different format than what we would get in eBuilder. But this is all the data that's coming from eBuilder, so we're able to see how much sewer main we put in 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 Anacostia in the last month, you know, for the whole year, and then the total for the year. Sewer house connections, you know, these are actually we replaced the connection, uh, and then this is how much footage we've replaced in the sewer house, and this is the total that we spent in the sewer jobs for the last month. Um, actually, for the fiscal year, for that in that column. Um, so again, this is all about mileage for us. Well, we have, we are concerned about the cost, but the cost rolls up with the mileage, and so we can look at Gaithersburg, we can look at Lindsville and we can see you know, all the information. The, uh, it doesn't print out like with the names roll, r r rolling over the numbers here when you print it out. It's just for some reason when you view it on the screen, it it's, doesn't cut the, the field off in the right place. Um, so this is the, the monthly report that we produce uh, on the 29th or 30th of the month, depending on what it is, and this is what gets sent to the chief engineer. Um, we have this, like I said, we have the same, we have the same report for water uh, we have a water monthly report we can run that it, it does the same thing. Um, so we are able to look at it from either water or sewer to get that you know overview information of you know what what is our group doing. So we have goals. Our our goals are based on you know how much uh, water main we get in or how much how many water connections we get replaced. And so this gives us a simple the same information from the water side that we got from the sewer side. And keeps the, the laptops with the air cards with the inspectors in the field for them being able to access eBuilder overall. Has that been a, a good experience for them? Any speed issues? I mean, is, is that solution work? You've got 59 examples in the field. Yeah, it works really uh, pretty well. Um, I think that the it's all dependent on the network that you're on and the and the you know air card that you're using. But in general, we find that it works it works really well. Um, we're hoping that we can uh, move to. Uh, iPad sometime in the future. It's been it's been discussed. It hasn't been committed to yet. But uh, um, we're the the guys in the field uh, like it. They they love the fact they can enter the work order, the information on a work order, and they when they submit that, then they're done. Because used to they would have to make sure they would have to transfer the information to a spreadsheet, and then that spreadsheet had to go to the secretary, and then the secretary would have to enter it into the compute into the mainframe system, and you know it was just another. Three steps that could end up with more data data corruption. And now, if it's right and the manager approves it, it goes directly into the mainframe. Hey, Keith, before you go, is it possible to just show one of the flow charts that you guys have developed for your oh, processes? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Let me uh, let me jump back. I'll take you over to one of my projects, which is our uh, what we call our service connection uh, permits. And um, this is where. Go ahead. So while you're going to that, uh, you know, this is always the area of caution that uh, this is the hard part, really. Not so much the technical pieces, but what Keith is going to show you, and I haven't seen a specific flow chart he's going to pick on here, but um, the getting everyone together to find what the process is. If, if some of you already have that flow charted now on paper and everyone agrees to it, then you're in great shape because then you can just actually code it within eBuilder. I think the hard part is getting everyone to agree that that's the process to then follow what you're about where you're about to see here. Right. So this is a process when a new uh, connection is uh, requested by an applicant, and they submit a what's called a service connection package, um, and it goes through the permitting process uh, in our permitting group, and then it becomes when that's completed, then it comes up to us to uh, do the implementation, um, either you know through the our contractor or through the applicant's contractor if it's a bigger project. So here we have a list of all the uh, different uh, permits that are outstanding right now. Um, we actually started this back in September, and um, we're tracking these. Before we tracked them on a spreadsheet, uh, I'm going to show you what that spreadsheet looks like, um, maybe. <laughs> um, but uh, it uh, we track all of those uh, on a uh, called SCP log sheet. So, you know, the only way you could find anything was, you know, you had to hunt and peck for the one or hope that you had the right address. Whereas with eBuilder, you know, I can search for uh, an address, you know, um, all I have to know is, you know, some portion of the name and I can 
click in here and search for it, and it'll uh, pull up you know the all the not only the connection tracking but also the daily inspection reports for that particular permit. So it's a great way for us to quickly find something when somebody calls and wants information about a particular permit. If I go back to that project though, and if we go in and start one of these processes, or actually, I'm just going to pick on one because I want to show you the flow chart. Yep. Um, if I look at you know what we start with is basically we start with this information you know right here from from owner's name down to the connection size. That's what we start with. That's entered by our engineering assistant when she gets the package from the permits groups, and it goes through review. We add the, all the information about the developer and the contractors, and what what permits are required, and then. Uh, once we're ready to send it to construction, we'll add, you know, whatever other information we have, uh, like the um, location form and the 200-foot sheets and, except, you know, that kind of thing. Um, if, if I look at the workflow, this this is what our workflow looks like for this particular process. So we start here by filling out that basic information. It's reviewed here to determine, you know, what permits are required. And then we go through a bunch of checks. Do we have a, do we have a utility contractor? All right. Yes. Okay. Is it approved? Yes. Okay. Well, then we go to the permits. What permits are required? Well, we need a road permit and a tree permit. Are they included? Yeah. So then we can go to meter vaults. Do we need a meter vault on this installation? No. Then we, so then if it's no, we just go down here to the checklist. So at any time I can see in the process where we are by this blue circle uh, be around the, the particular step that we're in. Uh, so this shows me that I'm in the checklist step. The next is going to be go to construction. It'll go to the contract manager at one of the depots, and they'll assign a contract manager for this particular job. And then it goes through the rest of the steps. So if I go back here, I can, I can go back and look at one of these that's in construction. Uh, if I pick on this one, uh, you, I can open it up, and I can see that I'm in, it's in construction. It's been assigned to Alfred Joyner. They haven't assigned an inspector yet, but we're waiting for them to complete what documents they're going to send back to us, plus the date of construction. Um, once that's done, then, I'll, then it'll go be a uh, it'll go to awaiting release of liens, um, and I don't have any of those. But if I go to, the, if I just show you the finished ones, um, you know, this is uh, this is the ones we finished since we started this particular process. But if I look at the finished one, and then it shows me everything that happened. You know, it shows me um, all the information and and when it was completed. So, so literally, when someone asks you, "Hey, where are we at with this?" If right. they have access to the system, they don't even have to ask that question. Or you're in a meeting, you're able to bring this up in real time. I suspect. Absolutely, that's what I said. I can I can go back here and I can search for, you know, any permit number or any uh, the name of any street. And, you know, if I, if I go back and search for Pony again, as soon as I do that, it's going to bring up all the information about the, this Pony Branch Road project. And, and then I can simply just click on the connection and I can open it up and I can see, you know. What's the inf I can see all the information about it. It's a two-inch water connection with a four-inch sewer. And here are the people that are in the developer's name and the contractor's name. And, you know, it's actually in construction, and this is the contract manager who's managing that construction. Can Each you – uh, go ahead. All right. uh, I was going to ask, can you show us how you set up a workflow? Oh, absolutely. So we simply, uh, as an administrator, I have the ability to go into processes and manage processes. Um, here's one that I'm working on right now. You, you would just say create a new process right here, but when you do that, then you essentially it opens up to you define what the process is going to be. Um, then you define what your data fields are that you want to capture in that particular process, right? Um, then you go through and create your page layouts, and a page layout would be like a request form, you know. So it shows you, you know, you put in the fields that you want in your request form. And then you can view it by doing preview, and it'll show you what it's going to look like before you publish it. Right? If you decide you don't like that, you can edit it. You can move stuff around, or you know, however you want to lay it out. And then finally, you go into the workflow and you create a new workflow, um, and then and then you can make your 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 workflow, you know, look something like this. So this is one I haven't quite finished yet, but I'm I'm getting close. Um, and, you, and you've dragged and dropped all those from the left to the right, right and exactly. built it in that. Right, exactly. So you know, each one of these, each one of these fields, then you can look at the properties of it, and you can define, you know, what's going to happen. Okay, well, who's available to do this? Who's the actor on this role? You can just, it's the engineering assistant. Okay, they're conducting the field test, and you know, what what actor layout are they going to use? They're going to use the flow test field ticket, right? 
Uh, and then what actions do they have? The field test is completed, right? So when they take an action, it'll be completed, and then it'll go to the next step. So all this is defined as you build the process by the, uh, the administrator. Does that answer your question? It does. Thank you. So Keith, I know you had to run to your 1 o'clock. Uh, you've been so gracious with your time. I appreciate it. Oh, no problem. I'm, I'm happy to, uh, you know, show you guys what we're doing. And, and um, you know, if you have any questions, um, I'm sure John can, you know, uh, you can get in touch with John and he can uh, give me, give you know, give you my number and I'll be happy to talk to you offline if that's uh, something that you would need. Great. Thanks a lot, Keith. All right, guys. Well, thanks. Hope you always have a great